This is probably the hardest video I've had to make so far. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. As the video title suggests, I have officially sold my Nissan 370Z. And today, I'm gonna talk about exactly why. Before I get into it though, let me give you some background info on the car itself. I owned the car for about 20 months, stored it for the last two winter seasons, so realistically, I only drove it for about a year. During the time I actually drove the car, it was my daily driver. I bought it at 34,000 kilometers, sold it at 50,000, so approximately put 16,000 kilometers on the car. I bought the car bone stock. As far as modifications go, I didn't do too much. I'll post a link to the video down below. Check it out if you want to know all the mods that I did to the 370Z. That video is actually the most popular video on my YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, I started the YouTube channel because of the 370Z. My goal of the YouTube channel in the beginning was to share my experiences with the car. When I first bought the car, I created a detailed plan of exactly everything I wanted to do to the car. My vision for the car my version of what a 370z should be i've always been into cars from a young age so buying a sports car was definitely on the bucket list and in fact the 370z was the first sports car i ever owned believe it or not i am once again sitting in a honda civic as you might have seen from the other videos on the channel i used to own a honda civic which was my winter beater slash sort of daily driver when I wasn't driving the 370Z. With all that being said, let's get right into it. Let's talk about why I sold my Nissan 370Z. The number one issue I ran into, practicality. The 370Z did not have back seats at all. Whether it comes to having more than one passenger, groceries, a child car seat, or even something simple like a school bag, a basic storage-like item, you don't always wanna put that kind of stuff in the trunk. With the 370Z, there's nothing you can do in that situation. But really, for most people, I would imagine the main issue is when you have more than one passenger. Another practicality problem with the 370Z, trunk space. The 370Z doesn't really have a, a trunk. It's more of a hatchback design. The hatch space in the 370Z is wide enough, but not very deep and not very high. And the way the hatch slopes down at the rear, the height of any object you're placing in, in the hatch, it's, it's really critical. There were far too many instances where I would go and place an object in, in the hatch in the 370Z. I would go to close the hatch and it wouldn't close. If you go to Ikea or if you go to anywhere else, you buy like a little cabinet or um, anything around the house. Anytime I would, you know, go for a purchase like that, I would think to myself, is it going to fit in the car? And at some point that gets quite frustrating. Okay, the next practicality issue storage compartments okay so sitting in the honda civic i've got storage here along the door i've got storage here i've got storage here below the center console plenty of storage down here with the 370z there was barely any storage space in the car so that poses a bit of a challenge when it comes to simple everyday items like your sunglasses, your cell phone, your wallet, your keys, a USB cable for maybe charging your phone in the car. It actually is a bit of an issue for, you know, everyday items. I actually had to take my sunglasses out of the sunglasses case because the case was too big. It wouldn't fit in the storage compartment. Another issue with the 370Z, cup holders. Okay, check this out. I've got one cup holder here, one cup holder here, and if you shift this back, I've got another one down there, and I've got one here, which actually fits 
a average size water bottle, unlike the 270Z. But wait, there's more. Coming to the back seats, I pull this guy down. I've got two more cup holders back here. The 370Z only has one cup holder and even that one cup holder is positioned right behind your shift lever. It's almost like Nissan is saying to everybody, you're not allowed to drink anything in the 370Z. What do you do if you wanna grab coffee with a passenger? Or let's say it's only you, you wanna have a coffee and a water bottle in the car. On top of that, whatever you placed in that one cup holder, every time you go to shift, you're knocking that thing around. Okay, let's talk about blind spot issues in the 370Z. The visibility in the 370Z is amazing only when you're looking directly ahead. Trying to make a lane change in the 370Z, good luck, especially if you're turning to the right. You've got this tiny window on the passenger side just behind the passenger seat, you can barely see out of it, and you can only use that for lane changing if the passenger seat is positioned in a certain way. You're gonna try to back out of a parking spot. Once again, good luck. The rear window on the hatch is so small, you can barely see anything. You have tinted windows, you're pretty much blind out here, especially when driving in the night. The rear sloping hatch design of the 370Z, um, I think is really the culprit of these uh, blind spot issues. Alongside it being a sports car, so generally it sits quite low to the road. I get it that the 370Z is a sports car and most sports car are designed like this or rather some would say they should be designed like this. But again, I'm talking about the practicality of the car, especially when, uh, when using it as a daily driver. Yes, as you can see in the Civic, it is a automatic transmission. This is a bit of a controversial topic, especially if you own a manual 370Z. In my opinion, it really comes down to how much you drive and where you drive. So for reference, I was using the 270Z as a daily driver. I was using it to commute to work for everyday tasks, for groceries, for going out on the weekends. And that totaled up to about 300 kilometers a week, both city and highway driving in all kinds of traffic situations. The 370Z doesn't have the easiest clutch or shifter in my opinion, so my left leg and right arm really took a beating. For me personally, driving the 370Z every single day really took a toll on my body. Okay, on to my second main point, cost of owning a 370Z. So this is the Honda Civic, right there, eight liters per 100 kilometers. While daily driving the 370Z, both city and highway driving, I was averaging about 12 liters per 100 kilometers. And with a 70 liter tank, that means I was getting about 500 kilometers per tank. If you think about it, 12 liters per 100 kilometers is actually not that bad for a sports car. The main issue and when it comes to the cost uh, for gas is that you have to put premium gas. So minimum octane of 91. So essentially you're paying more than your average car to get those 500 kilometers. And especially with the gas prices nowadays, the cost of gas alone can really add up. Okay, oil changes. The 370Z is not just your average car, it's a sports car. If I'm owning a car like that, I wanna make sure that I give it the best treatment, the best sort of maintenance, and make sure that I'm really taking care of the car. So when it comes to oil changes, I was doing oil changes every 5,000 kilometers and using the best quality oil, the cost of oil changes, it, it really adds up. Okay, the next thing, car insurance. The 370Z is not your average car, it's a sports car. So by default, the insurance premium is on the higher side. At the end of the day, you can only control so much on the road. So I wanted to make sure that I had the best insurance package which also meant that the insurance premium was uh, quite costly. Another costly part of owning a sports car, which any car enthusiast will know, the cost of any aftermarket parts or modifications that you do to the car. Aftermarket parts, or I should say high quality aftermarket parts or high quality modifications, they are not cheap. Yeah, you could cheap out and get some of the cheaper brands, but long-term those parts just don't last. 
So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I had a detailed plan of all the modifications I wanted to do to my 370Z. And that also meant that it was gonna cost, uh, cost quite a bit. You could argue, hey, why don't you just keep the car stock? But for me personally, and I think a lot of car enthusiasts out there, when you buy a sports car, you only really tend to keep it stock for so long. I think a lot of people have their own vision of how the car should look like and how it should uh, perform. Not only that, the 370Z specifically, I believe that there are some modifications that are necessary. The car definitely has some issues from factory. Again, check out the link below to the other video I made on the five mods I recommend for the 370Z. I go into a lot more detail in that video. This brings me to my third and final point, why I sold my Nissan 370Z. The third point being my use of the car. As I've mentioned throughout this video, I was daily driving the 370Z from commuting to work to getting groceries to any kind of weekend trips or, or weeknight trips. The more and more I did this, I realized that I wasn't really enjoying the car anymore. This may be another controversial topic. I guess there have been uh, many of them throughout this video, but I truly believe that the Nissan 370Z is more of a track car than it is a street car. Think about it, it's a rear wheel drive car, manual transmission, low ride height, 300 horsepower from factory. To me, it just screams, let's go fast on a track. Because it was a daily driver for me, I couldn't really track it and I couldn't really mod it the way that I believe the car should have been modded without sacrificing a lot of money, time, reliability, drivability, and overall comfort. For example, at some point I wanted to turbocharge the car, but as soon as you start playing around with force induction or boost levels, it starts to affect the reliability of the car. No matter how strong or how bulletproof an engine might be designed, as soon as you start adding more air and fuel into that engine, it just creates more potential or more possibility for something to go wrong. So for that reason, the 370Z being my daily driver, I needed to make sure that the car was as reliable and as comfortable as possible. I loved owning the 270Z for as long as I did. I loved driving it. I just did not enjoy it as much as a daily car and I did not see it as a practical car long term. If I could have kept it as a weekend car only or a track car, a dedicated track car, that for me would have been the most ideal situation. I know a lot of the content on this YouTube channel has been about the 370Z, but I assure you, me selling the 370Z will not stop this channel. I will continue to make some fun videos for you guys. The content will definitely continue. And if you're wondering what I'm gonna talk about next, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and you'll find out for yourself. Speaking of subscribing, my YouTube channel recently hit 100 subscribers, which compared to a lot of other channels out there, it's not a lot, but it is a milestone for me. So I just wanted to take this chance to, uh, to thank all of you who subscribed. I definitely appreciate it. For now, I'm enjoying this uh, 2017 Honda Civic as my new daily driver. By no means is this an end to my sports car journey. I definitely plan on getting another sports car in the future. Thank you for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.